quick demo of this video tutorial. In this video, we are going to implement JavaScript CRUD table with add, edit, remove using HTML and CSS. In order to insert a new record, first of all, populate the form. If you submit the form, corresponding employee will be added into this HTML table here. If you want to update this record, just click on this edit button here. Then it will populate the corresponding employee back to this HTML form. Then make the required changes. Then click on submit. So here we have updated corresponding employee. If you want to delete an employee record, click on delete. Then it will ask for confirmation. Are you sure to delete this record or not? Click on OK. So here we have deleted corresponding employee record. Apart from this, we have discussed HTML form validation using pure JavaScript. I hope this video will be helpful for JavaScript and HTML beginners. So please watch till the end of this video tutorial. Before starting this video, I would like to ask you a favor. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video. If you are new here, please be subscribed to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notification about my new videos. Most of the video lesson here also has a written blog post. You can find the link in video description. You can grab code from the as well. What's up YouTube? Welcome to Code Affection. This is my beginner's tutorial for HTML and JavaScript. In this tutorial, we are going to implement pure JavaScript CRUD operations with HTML. Without further ado, let's get started. We will be creating required HTML and JavaScript files inside this project folder here. We will be using Visual Studio Code Editor for this project. In order to open the IDE in this project directory, right click here, then click on open with code. First of all, I will start with creating index.html. So first of all, we have to set the doc type as HTML followed by HTML tag itself. Inside that we have the head tag and then we have the body tag. Whatever HTML element we have inside this body tag here will be displayed inside the web page. First of all, inside this head tag, I will set the page title as HTML CRUD with pure JavaScript. In order to work with this project, we have to have one style sheet and one JavaScript file. So let me create those two files here, script.js and then we have styles css now we have to add these two files inside this html here it is recommended to add style sheet just before the head end tag here and regarding the script files it is a best practice to add them just before the body end tag here so here we have set the basic foundation for this project let me save all of these modifications here then I want to open this index.html inside the web browser. So back to the project folder directory here. Then double click on index.html. So here we have the page title as HTML CRUD with pure JavaScript. Now in order to design this application, I will be using basic HTML table. So here we have the table. Inside that we have a row with two columns. Inside this first column, I will show the form for CRUD operations. It will be a basic HTML form. Inside that we will implement the CRUD operations insert update. And inside the second cell here we will have an HTML table. Inside that we will list all of the inserted records. So first of all we will add the form for insert and update operation inside this first cell here. So here we have the HTML form. Basically inside this application we are going to implement operations add, edit and remove around employee details like full name, employee code, then city and salary. So first of all, I will add controls for full name. So first of all, we have the label for full name. After that, we have the input control, which is the text box. Here we have set the type as text. So it will be a text box. And here we have set the name attribute as full name. Since these two controls are related to a single property full name, I want to enclose them inside a div here. For that I will do this. Like this we have to add HTML elements for remaining field also. So let me copy this and pasting below three times 
and we have to change the uh, label and attribute name accordingly first of all it would be for employee code so I will set this name as EMP code and this is for salary and finally we have label text box pair for city at last we have to have a button for submitting this form so for that purpose I will add this div here inside that we need an input with type will be um, submit then I will set the value as submit in order to style or position in this div I want to add this custom class here form action buttons now let me save this then back to the application reload this page so here we have the plain HTML form for CRUD operations before styling this form here I want to add an HTML table so that when we insert new employee records we can add them into this new table here so inside this second column here we want to have another table in order to list inserted records so here we have the table with custom class list inside that first of all I will add the T head with a single row inside that we have to add column header for each employee record so here we have the full name employee code salary and city along with these columns I want to add one more column in order to show action buttons like edit and delete beneath this T head we need the T body inside that we can insert employee records dynamically when we submit the form now in order to identify these HTML elements from JavaScript I will add ID for these elements here so first of all we have the table and I will set it as employee list then we have city text box then salary text box employee code and full name text box now in order to style these elements here I will quickly update this style sheet here styles.css so here we have the all CSS rules for this application we are not going to discuss these CSS rules here so that we can focus on pure JavaScript CRUD operations and edit remove now let me save all of these modifications then reload this page here so this is how the application looks like now let's try to submit this form here so that we can insert new records into this HTML tables here data saved inside this project will not be persistent instead we will store them inside this HTML table directly just to understand pure JavaScript CRUD operations with HTML form submission in most of the web browser you can see input predictions like this these are the predictions from previous form submission in order to avoid predictions or autocomplete inside form controls we can set this autocomplete property as off now let me save this then back to the application so this is how we can prevent default autocomplete from the browser now let's try to submit this HTML form in order to insert a new employee record inside this HTML table here that we can do with on submit event for this form here so here we have the on submit event inside that we have to pass a JavaScript function for CRUD operations before the JavaScript function when we submit an HTML form we can see some default behaviors if I submit this form you can see that this page is reloaded and it also posts form controls data so first of all we have to prevent this default behavior of an HTML form which is reloading and sending form data through query string or URL parameters for that we just need to do this event event dot prevent default will uh, block this default behavior of the form let me save this then uh, let me do the same that we have done before now if you submit this form you can't see any default behavior now we have to deal with the form submission inside a JavaScript function for that we will create one function on form submit inside this JavaScript file here so here it is function function name will be on form submit first of all inside this function we have to retrieve values from these input controls here for that I'm going to define a separate function here so here is the function read form data first of all I will define a variable form data 
Inside this form data, we can push value of full name text box like this. We can access HTML elements using the ID by calling this function get element by ID from document object. So here we have the full name ID, which is the input control for full name here. Like this, we have to push values for remaining controls also. So here we have employee code, then salary and city. Finally, from this function, we have to return this object form data. For that, we can do this return form data. Now let's call this function from this form submit here. Where form data is equal to read form data. So inside this object form data, we have retrieved all values from these HTML controls here. Now using this object here, we have to insert new record inside this HTML table here. For that, I will define another function here, which is insert new record with a single parameter data. Into this function, we will be passing this form data here. That means it will have these much properties, full name, employee code, salary and city. So first of all, we have to have a JavaScript object for this HTML table. We have given an ID for HTML table here, which is employee list. To be specific, we have to insert new records inside this T body here. So we can do this. We have this object table. Inside that, we have the T body from the table which has the ID employee list. So it will be this T body element here. Now inside this T body element, we have to insert a new row. For that, we can call this function insert row. Inside that, we have to pass the index of new row. Where we have passed length of the table. Initially, length will be zero. Upon new record insertion, it will increment by one. So it is perfectly suited for index of new record which is to be added. Now inside this row we have to insert new cell for these employee details. For that we can do this. We will call the function insert cell with index of the cell. So here we have inserted a new cell inside this row. Now inside the first column we have to insert full name value. For that we can do this cell one dot inner HTML and inside that we have set this full name which is from this data parameter here. Like this we have to insert a new cell and save the corresponding value for these remaining properties here. For that we can do this. Here we have the cell for employee code, then salary and city. Finally inside the table we have an extra column for buttons like edit and delete operation. So we have to add one more cell for edit button and delete button. So here is the cell. Inside this cell, we need the HTML for those two buttons. So we can do this. This is for edit operation. Finally, we need one more anchor element for delete operation. This HTML can be passed using uh, double quotes or single quotes, or we can even use back tick also. So here is the difference. If you use single quotes instead of back tick here, you can see the difference. We must provide them in a single line, otherwise we will have problems. For better readability, we may have to split them into multiple lines. So we can use back ticks in those cases instead of these single quotes and double quotes. Now let's call this function from this submit event here. Insert new record inside that we have to pass this form data object. Let me save all of these modifications here. Then uh, reload this page. Let me insert a new record. Click on submit. Boom. So here we have the newly inserted record for Tony Abraham. After submitting this form here, we want to reset the form controls to the initial value. For that, I will define a separate function here. Function name will be reset form inside that we have to clear these form controls separately. So this is what we do. Document.getElementID and we have this full name text box here and we will set the value to empty string. Like this, we have to reset remaining text boxes. For that, we can do this. Now let's call this reset form function inside this form submit event here. 
Now let's implement the next CRUD operation which is edit or update operation. For that we have to click on this edit hyperlink here and we have to populate the corresponding employee details inside this form here. So let's look how we can do that. For that first of all along with this hyperlink here we have to add the on click event for this hyperlink. Now we have to implement this on edit function and into this function we have passed a reference for this td cell html. So here is the function on edit with a single parameter td. First of all inside this function I will declare a variable selected row and inside this variable we have to store the corresponding html row which is this tr element. For that we can do this. First of all we have the td parent element. Inside this td element we will have the corresponding cell html and with this parent element property we have the exact cd element from the row. Instead of td cell we need the corresponding tr element for that we can do this. So this will return the corresponding row element. Now inside this function we are going to populate these employee details back to this form here. For that we just need to do this. First of all we have the full name text box and into this text box we have to populate the employee full name. So here it is we have the corresponding row and we have the first cell which is for full name and from that cell we need to return in the HTML which will be the exact employee name. After that we have to do the same for remaining text box also employee code, salary and city. Now let me save all of these modifications here then reload this page Previously inserted record will not be there inside this table. For the demonstration I am going to insert one more employee here. So here we have the newly inserted record for the employee Bruno Nash. Now click on this edit button here. So here we have populated corresponding employee details back to the form here. Now after making required changes for update operation we have to submit this form. We have already wired up a function for this form submission which is here on form submit. Inside this function we have already implemented CRUD operation insert. Now we have to change this function in order to accommodate update operation. For that basically we have to identify whether the current operation is insert or update operation. For that I will be using this property here selected row. So first of all I want to make this property as a global variable inside this script file here. So I will add that declaration here was selected row initially it would be null. So in case of insert operation it would be null. During update operation when we click on the edit hyperlink it will be populated with corresponding employee row. So based on this property here we can decide whether we have an insert operation or update operation. So it is also necessary to reset the property during the uh, reset form function here. Then back to the form submit function here. First of all during update operation this will be null. If the property is null then we will do the insert operation otherwise we have to do the update operation. Regardless of update or insert operation first of all we have to fetch the current form data into this property form data here. For update operation I am going to define one more function here. So here is the function update record with a single parameter form data. Now in order to update the employee details here based on the new values from this form we can do this. Here we have the corresponding employee record tr element. We have the first cell inside that we have to save the full name of the employee. Like this we have to update remaining cells also. We have employee code, salary and city. Now we just need to call this function inside the else block here. Before testing this update operation let me implement the final CRUD operation which is delete here. So here is the function on delete with a single parameter td and inside that first of all we have to store the corresponding tr element inside this property here and then in order to delete that corresponding row from this html table here we just need to do this. We have the corresponding employee html table then we just need to call this function delete row. Inside that we have to provide the corresponding 
employee row index so this is what we need for delete operation after deleting the record we have to reset the form and since we have a delete operation it would be a loss of data so we have to confirm the operation from user side so i will add this if close here with this confirm message are you sure to delete this record or not if user confirm the operation then only we are going to do the delete operation inside if close here now let me save this then back to the application here reload this page then let me add one more employee so here we have added a new employee record for Roy Matthew now let's check edit and delete operation for edit operation click on this hyperlink here so here we have populated corresponding employee details I will append a suffix with updated text here then submit the form so here we have updated employee record for Roy Matthew then if you want to delete this employee just click on this delete hyperlink here then it will ask for confirmation are you sure to delete this record or not if you confirm it it will delete the corresponding employee finally I want to show you how to implement validation inside this HTML form with pure JavaScript I want to make this full name as a mandatory field in order to indicate this is a mandatory field I will append the suffix with a star so here it is I will append this star here if we submit the form without filling full name here we have to show a validation error message so I will add that label here so here we have the label inside the label we have this message this field is required for this uh, label we have added this specific ID full name validation error and we have few uh, custom uh, classes also so initially this label will be hidden because of this custom class here height we have to show this label when we have an error with form validation function name will be validate inside the function first of all I will define a boolean value is valid and it will be set as true initially after that we have to check the full name text box value if it is empty string then we have to reset this boolean value is valid to false then we have to show this label here for that we have to remove this hide class from the class list for that we just need to do this inside this class list here for the label that we have just added here we have to remove this hide class from class list array in the else block we have to do the reverse operation first of all we will set the boolean value to true then we will check whether we have a hide class inside this label if there is no hide class we will add the class here finally we have to return this boolean value is valid now we just need to call this function before form submission here if is valid returns true then only we will do this insert and update operation here sorry instead of is valid we have a function validate let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application reload the page then I will try to submit this form without entering full name so here we have the validation error this field is required now let me fill this form properly now let's submit the form so here we have inserted new employee record to Watson and we hide that validation error message for full name so that's it guys in this video we have implemented curved operations with HTML and pure JavaScript you can download this project source code from the github link given below in video description if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this please be subscribed to my channel code affection please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this have a nice day bye